Stanfield and today I'm going to look at how climate change is affecting farming in Kent. I'm here at Keeper's Nursery in East Farley to talk to local farmer Kareem Habibi about changes he's seen to his business over the last 20 years. Kent is nicknamed the Garden of England because of its agricultural output. East Farley in particular is home to a number of farms including Keeper's Nursery, a fruit tree farm, where I am today. East Farley is a small village and civil parish in the local government district of Maidstone, Kent. It is located on the south side of the River Medway, about two miles upstream from the town of Maidstone, and approximately 32 miles east of London. The area has been occupied since ancient times, and in the Roman era, villas and temples were spread along the banks of the Medway, and an archaeological investigation is currently underway on what appears to be a dwelling in several farm buildings off Lower Road. Though the population is now around 1,500 people, in 1801 the population of the village was 642. Over the next 80 years, it came to a peak of 1700 in 1881. This increase in population matches the increase in hop production, which the tithe map of 1841 shows covered 25% of all land in the parish, 40 years before peak production. The last village oost house ceased working in 1977, and today no hops are grown in the village. The village has a vibrant community atmosphere with an active football club, a weekly farmer's market, and regular events organised by the East Farley Community Network. Before I look at how climate change is affecting Keeper's Nursery, I want to understand what the current local climate is and why it has been so fruitful for farming. The mean annual temperature in East Farley is in line with the average for the wider county at a relatively balmy 10.3 degrees Celsius. Summer temperatures are typically around 20 to 22 degrees, with winters falling as low as 1 to 2. East Farley receives around 114 rainy days per year, with an average yearly precipitation of approximately 700 millimetres. Rainfall is relatively evenly spread throughout the year, though October and November are the wettest months, receiving an average of 93 and 83 millimetres respectively, compared to the drier summer months which typically receive between 50 and 60 millimetres. It looks peaceful enough today, but in the past the River Medway has flooded, causing significant economic damages to villages downstream, including East Farley. Flood risks are the main severe weather threat to East Farley. On Christmas and Boxing Day in 2013, East Farley and the nearby towns of Maidstone, Morling and Yolding experienced severe flooding as sustained levels of heavy rain caused the Medway to break its banks. The town's bridge was submerged and cut off access. The Kent Local Climate Impacts Profile identified 52 severe weather events over a 14-year period. As well as flooding, the region has also suffered from heat waves, droughts, freezing temperatures and snow, as well as multiple storm events. The financial impact amounted to over £35 million to county services, with indirect costs and investments totalling a further £428.7 million. These severe weather events are predicted to continue, and over the last 45 years, weather patterns in Kent have largely been in line with the UK-wide climate changes. As a southern county, Kent has warmed more than northerly regions, and East Farley in particular has already warmed by 1.2 degrees Celsius since 1840. The Carbon Brief has used representative concentration pathways to measure how temperatures could increase for every part of the world. Taken from the IPCC's 2007 Expert Meeting Report, these pathways provide time-dependent projections of greenhouse gas emissions, and Carbon Brief have used them to predict the resulting temperature rise. Under RCP 2.6, temperatures in East Farley are predicted to rise by 1.6 degrees. This represents a peak and decline scenario, where stringent mitigation and carbon dioxide removal technologies mean atmospheric CO2 concentration peaks and then falls during the century. At the other end of the scale, the map shows that temperatures could rise to as much as 4.5 degrees Celsius under a high emissions scenario of RCP 8.5, where a business as usual scenario of high greenhouse gas emissions is brought about by rapid population growth, high energy demand, fossil fuel dominance and an absence of climate change policy. So what other changes are predicted for East Farley? As we've already seen, heavy rainfall and subsequent flooding is a big concern. Over the last 45 years, the South East has experienced an increase in the amount of winter rain that falls and heavy downpours, while summer rainfall has decreased. Using a medium emissions scenario from the UK Climate Projections Report, we can see that winter rainfall is likely to increase by 16%. Further, according to the local climate impact profile taken by Kent County Council, there is an increased likelihood of severe weather events, including a rise in frequency and intensity of heavy downpours, leading to more flooding, as well as increased storminess and high winds. The LCLIP estimates that flooding could account for 56% of estimated weather-related financial impacts in the county. Over the last 15 years, Kent incurred over 4.2 million direct costs from freezing temperature and snow events, 
and a further 1.5 million indirect costs. Many of East Farley's orchards and farms suffered high rates of tree and plant die-off, as much of the freezing weather occurred unexpectedly late in the season. In the short term, studies have shown that a warming Arctic could increase frequency of severe winter weather in the UK, as the low-pressure system known as the polar vortex is disrupted and strays further south. There is continuing uncertainty over this anomaly, though. It is estimated that in the long term, winters will be wetter and milder. What is more certain is that summers will be hotter and drier, with Kent likely to see more extreme summer weather and droughts. Over the last 15 years, the region has experienced seven heat waves and four drought events, which, though devastating to wildlife and uncomfortable for the human population, boosted grape and other fruit harvests. This trend looks set to continue, and a key way the county could become more resilient to the economic impacts of increasing temperatures could be to diversify the types of crops farmed here. I'll come back to that later. So how is East Farley adapting? Kent County Council, with the Kent Climate Change Network, have used the UK climate projections and a review of historic data to undertake a local climate impacts profile. This has underpinned the development of the Kent Adaptation Action Plan, and they have since developed a severe weather impacts monitoring system. The county has a number of plans, training and resources in place to respond to severe weather events. The Kent Resilience Forum has developed and continues to adapt a number of plans with Kent partners to respond to a number of risks, from flooding and sea level rise to droughts and storms. Kent County Council has also produced an environment strategy to manage the impacts of climate change and identify key opportunities, as well as develop a comprehensive action plan. So I'm back at Cuba's nursery with Kareem Habibi. So Kareem, can you tell me about any weather changes you've seen over the last 20 years? Yeah, uh, generally we've had, we've experienced quite mild, long, sort of dry autumn spells, uh, as you can see today. And uh, I mean, the extreme temperatures can be different, but we are seeing lots of extreme sort of drought or wet periods, which can be quite annoying, actually. And is your growing season similar? Or has it changed from shorter, longer? Growing season has probably got a bit longer, but we are due, we are we are forced to irrigate during the summer so that when it is very dry, um, and with the winters being mild, sometimes the growing season goes on. A, well, the autumn being mild, the growing season sort of carries on a bit too long, uh, which can affect the trees because they don't actually drop their leaves and go into a dormant phase, which is crucial for our business because we only sell bare root trees, so we have to lift them when they've dropped their leaves. And there's a very sort of tight window between about December and March, which which is when we can do that. Mm. So that can become a bit unpredictable, like become even shorter some years. So what kind of impacts have you seen on your business? Uh, generally, everything's okay. Certain varieties don't really do very well. There's an apricot that just won't drop its leaves at all. And it will have its, it, it will experience sort of, well, we'll experience lots of failures with the trees purely because in December, when the weather actually does become very cold, the tree is still got all its leaves on, and then the tree actually starts to die. That's the dormitory, which can cope with extreme cold weather. Yeah. I think you'll continue to see those types of trends in the woods. Probably. I think it will just be very unpredictable, and we sort of do have to plan for the worst case scenario, but generally, things don't seem that extreme yet. Yeah, there is a slightly longer growing period. Obviously, fruit varies from year to year, but some years you get a bumper crop, which is obviously good for our customers to buy the fruit trees. And people are sort of sort of shifting the way that they're sort of, uh, planting gardens. You know, less bedding, which is very sort of water dependent, planting more trees, which produce shade, and also for wildlife, people are very keen to help birds and bees where you know the weather isn't. However, milder winters and a longer growing season might not be all bad news. Local farmers are starting to diversify their business and adapt to the changing seasons by growing different types of crops. For example, vineyards have been on the increase in the local area over the last 10 years. Of course, no region exists in isolation and climate change is a global problem which will have transboundary impacts. With East Farley being reliant on key rail and road connections to the larger cities of Maidstone and London, travel disruption from extreme weather events could impact the ability of locals to get to work, visit family and access key services such as Maidstone Hospital. Additionally, the ability of local farmers to sell food beyond their borders is likely to be negatively impacted if crucial transport links are cut off in severe weather events. 
A more complicated but very real transboundary impact which could increase in the future is the issue of climate change refugees. With its coastal links to Europe, Kent has been on the front line of receiving refugees fleeing from war-torn countries such as Syria over the last few years. Whilst being inland has sheltered East Farley from receiving refugees to date, if severe temperature rises and droughts in other countries results in an increased number of people seeking refuge from climate change, which many predict will be the case, the region may have to find home for a large number of vulnerable people. This presents a number of logistical, economic and cultural challenges which the area will have to plan for and adapt to. East Farley will see a number of both threats and opportunities from climate change. Kent Council have so far responded well in terms of addressing impacts and adaptation planning, but how individual regions will fare varies greatly. East Farley is well positioned to adjust its main agricultural output to crops which deal better in milder conditions, but farmers must engage with Kent Council's impact assessment in order to be able to adapt well.